How's it sound? Can you hear me good? Sounds real good, buddy. All right. So we're, we're running hot right now. And um, right there is what I need. Okay. So basically we're... We're trying something new out here, everybody. Is making sure my levels are good. Um, we're good right there. We are on air. We are recording. We're recording on the camera right there. So we're doing a one camera up here. But uh, if you're watching this, not a lot of people. I mm-hmm. mean, we record a lot of these. We recorded a lot of them over the last year and a half, but nobody's seen anything really because it's just been a workload. Mm-hmm. It's been a lot. And some like, you know, we bought these couches yeah. and uh was like oh that's gonna be the ticket and then the couches are nice but then it's like man you know you need you need like a table you mm-hmm. need something to put a drink on you need something to put a computer on something people can like kind of lean up on and yeah and so like the other day i got this wild hair i'm like i'm gonna build a podcast table and you know with the room it's not the biggest and i'm like i don't even know what i'm gonna do i just went and bought some shiplap like old barnwood shiplap at Home Depot with some trim and framed it out and just built it. Got some new low profile profile uh, mic stands and we're ripping, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, well, here's for all the listeners. I, I'm going to give you a little bit of background of of kind of how this came about. Um, if if today is you know we're, we're here in the in the middle of February and almost it's got to be almost two years to the date is the first time it actually ever came up here because Close. I, I looked at, I looked back because we've been doing some homework on some upcoming dates that that uh, March 8th was the very first time I ever did an episode with you. That's when it dropped. So we probably recorded it somewhere around mid to end of February, most likely. And honestly, dude, you were my first in-studio guest that like people that I didn't know. Yeah. Like the first person yeah. to call in my house. Come blind. Yep. Yeah. Come blind. But I could have killed you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or you could have killed me. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just trying to figure out where you lived, to, you know, figure out where you hunt, you yeah, know, all that, exactly. all that bullshit. But uh, so I, I want to paint everyone a picture. So I've, I've known Aaron for two years, and I think I've, I've probably come up to your place probably ten to you know a dozen times, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm gonna give you some a little bit of shit here, and I know you're gonna be okay with it because it's, it's just that's just the nature of Aaron Blasey. Yep. If I've been here ten times inside the studio i don't think i've ever seen the studio the same two times in a row 100 percent. yeah and, <laughs> like, and i am i will fall on that sword i'm like the university of oregon's football team with their jerseys oh there we they go. have so many different yeah. comments you have you have no idea what you're gonna get yeah. when you get here yep. you know yeah i've and, seen i've seen the you know the original one you know the first one i ever seen that table and and uh it was so funny because i actually look back at that day after we recorded you're like hey let's take a picture because i have this idea i wanted to take pictures of all the in-guest studios i'm going to put them under glass on the podcast table mm-hmm. and then eventually then then you wanted to finish the top of that that podcast table then he did that and then you know we the computer desk has moved around a few times and then we you had like a corner uh like almost like a like a oh a floor pedestal yep. mount type stand had that then eventually we put the refrigerator inside of that yep. Then wanted a little bit more in home feels, and then you know you came down to my place. We're we're getting love seats and couches and, yep. and eliminating all the tables because, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but the the original podcast table you like you cut that thing up right like, oh yeah she's gone she's gone she's, gone. she's <laughs> actually just got burnt in a wood stove yeah there you go so so that's Full gone circle. so if, if aaron wanted to go back to that that's gone long gone, gone. and now we're now we gotta now we have a we have a mixture here he's yeah. he's got the uh his computer desk dialed in he says he, well don't don't take this the wrong way but you said you work best at a corner and a but, corner corner yep. desk yep. yeah corner desk. and uh so but we still have at least a couch and now we're to a you know this isn't even a table this is like a this is my style uh this is like a raised almost like a bar yeah in a way in in this i love this because like if, if my family and i go out to eat give me the high top yep seven days a week because i i just like the way it sits uh the, the way you, you you know you sit there and talk with the other people at the table this this table right here is uh, this feels like that. I, yeah. I think you nailed it, and you you said you got a couple more things you want to do to it. But uh, I uh, here we are today. We're we're breaking it in right now. Oh yeah, we're breaking it in. And you know, the thing is, is so 
in this office podcast studio, it's like, it's both like it's an office. So I spend every day in here and I want it to feel like I'm leaving my house almost. So like I very much like routine, but I also like to switch things up. Like I'm probably that person that would like change the furniture in the house. Probably I don't, but like I would do it if it like the furniture in the house doesn't bother me as much as the furniture in here. Like just nothing like really fit well. But when it's, when I, like when I moved everything and the desk, my work desk is over there and then this is here. I'm like, okay, when I have guests in here now, like everybody can be comfortable. You can have beers on top of the table here. Mm -hmm. You could have a rack right here. You could have a bow. You could have something. Nobody has to touch these arms. Like that yeah. was the other thing. I like don't like the... Like, I don't like that because that's why I have five headsets. We used to use the mm -hmm. headsets. And yep. it's like, but then you get the, you know, when people are trying to drink or something, I'm like, I don't want that. Yeah. Like, so I want to, I like the idea of being able to like sit and forget it, get everything dialed. If anybody wants to come over and record, just sit down. We'll hit record. Let's go. Yeah. You know, and I have one camera set up right now. It's just a one up on both of us here. And like, I just want to simplify things. I want it to look good, but I want it to like serve a purpose. I don't want to have to overthink it. And like, it would be great if I had people in here running three DSLRs, one tight on you, one tight on me, but right. that's just not the nature mm -hmm. of it. So yeah, here we are. Yep. And I tell you, you made the comment about like, you know, how you work from home or you, you want it to kind of feel a little bit different than, you know, maybe what the upstairs or the other rooms in your house were. I think uh, th that's something that may be so overlooked because you hear a lot, you know, in today's world, there is a lot of people that work from home. And I think a lot of people say, man, that'd be nice. But it's like, yeah, but you're, you are home all the time. So the all com the time. The comment that you made about you want it to feel different than the rest of your house. Like you want to you want to feel like when you step into this room, it's like stepping into to right. the workspace kind yep. of thing, you know. But I think you got a good mixture in here, man. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's full of deer mounts. Well, that's why. And like you know, you helped me put the deer mounts up and everything. And they were in the different part of the house. And like a lot of my deer mounts are in here and it's because I want this to be like the man mm -hmm. cave. It's, it's my man cave. Like yep. this is it. And I think these three back here are going to go to my, the safe, the, the hunting safe yep. that we built into the foundation. Um, because I've got three of the new ones coming, my three Michigan bucks from the last two years that I think would look really good up there. The, not that these don't mean anything, but these ones are just kind of like, I just think I, I I haven't seen the other ones in so long. These ones have been on my wall for like years yeah. now. And it's like, okay, I'm ready to like, you know, get some new ones in there. <laughs> but uh, this one's going to move. I'd like to put like a prime bow maybe up on the wall mm -hmm. or uh, it, it'll all change. Yeah. It, it will. Listen here. Uh, it will it'll change. change. Yeah. <laughs> and it, well, and the nice thing is, is, you know, if, if you look to my right, your left, you know, we, we got the, the three bucks that you were just talking about that you've seen them for a long time. Well, you get the copy. You got three more coming back. So it's just going to be copy and paste like, you know, right. out with the old in with the new kind of yep. thing, you know. But now this is, uh, you know, you you got to think like if we we're doing white tail cribs outside outside of, you know, the bedrooms. This is this is where the magic happens when it comes mm -hmm. to the podcast, when it comes to, you know, everything, all the filming and production you do for Latitude. Like there's a lot of stuff. You know, a lot of moving parts, a lot of magic being made in, yeah. inside this room right here. But I think it's cool, man, because, hell, you know, we talked about when I first ever came up here, this is how important it was to you that the first podcast I ever recorded with you, it was a completely roughed in house. There wasn't a single finished room except for this room studio studio a here. yeah studio you know I mean? a, so. there it is i like it we do need to name it yeah. like it needs to be named it, yeah. something different studio day but I, I hey if anybody's listening to this what should we name the podcast studio here that'd be a good one yeah. you know um naming stuff isn't easy either, no right? dude we're going through that process <laughs> yeah. right now like really excited to let everybody know here soon but something big coming and we're both really excited about it. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this, and this table is also designed so I could move the mics out of the way just by flipping them or turning them. And I could do product reviews for the YouTube channel on here, or we could do, I could do pictures like the other day I needed to do some studio pictures for like our new knee pads for latitude and stuff like that. And like the wood gives it like a really mm -hmm. cool look. And, uh, you can never go wrong with that look. No, you know I mean, it, it goes so well. Speak, speaking of this table, man, you, you built this thing up quickly, but I got to ask you, you know, cause you know, our, our dads always like to look over our things Yeah, and, and, you know, I know your dad came down to help you carry this downstairs yeah. and your dad's a hell of a carpenter basically. Uh -huh. He's built a lot of stuff. What dad think of the table? 
I thought I was heavy. And he goes, <laughs> how are we going to get this in the house? And I go, boy, I didn't think about that. Because <laughs> I built it three foot by five foot long. Yep. I'm like, oh, we'll get it in the house. He goes, Aaron, it's not going to fit. And I'm like, I think you're right. It's not yeah. going to fit. So we had to take two of the cross members off at the bottom because I built just basically a box so we could like weasel it in. And I had the old boy working. You yeah. know, he's, he's, he's in his upper 60s. I had... I ain't even working. Let, let, me, let me ask you this. This is something I do whenever I need like a hand, you know, my dad or grandpa Wayne come help me do something where, where it's, and it's nothing against that they're older, but I'm always like, if we have to carry something, like I'll be like, I'll walk backwards. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, I'll really, go down the stairs yeah, first. I'll go dad. down the stairs first. Cause it's like, that sucks a little, like, I know it's going to suck anyways, carrying it, but I'll at least walk backwards. I'll yeah. be the first one to go down the stairs, you know? Well, and a lot of people don't understand, like. The person that goes down the stairs drives the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Like the guy up, like going face or like going down, like he's just there steering the ship. The guy going downstairs is the one working the throttle. Oh, especially here we go or yep. here we're stopping. Well, okay. that and you got to think when you carry something up and down the stairs, the lower person needs to be able to raise whatever product or item they're carrying up to equal level value for the person up the stairs. Cause otherwise yeah. the to person up top, they're, they're, they're holding something that's all laid down by their ankles mm -hmm. where if you can raise it up higher on you, then it becomes higher. Out, yeah. It's a higher carrying point for the person on top of the for stairs. Sure. You know, it's, it's a real art, man. That's it is a, an art. <laughs> that, Let me that, ask you a question. Yeah. I see your tether on your, are the, is that too short? Mm, no, I, okay, I just cool. pulled some more out. Gotcha. Yeah. Just because yeah. that you're the farthest away from the board, yeah. so I didn't know how your headphones. Like, like I said, this is a dry run yeah. here. We're gonna no, figure this out. No, I like it. I like it a lot. Well, I had your headphones on earlier, and it threw me off, and I just figured out why it threw me off because the cord only goes to one side. Yeah. They, yep. Like I haven't been, I haven't wore a pair like that, and I was like, wait, <laughs> I wonder what side I would put the cord on. You know, these ones sound way better. Too. Do they? Like there's bass to it. Okay. Like it just makes it sound way it's better like a, it's like two speakers on your shoulders over this there. actually sounds how it comes out in the radio okay like yours is probably sounds a little more like hot dog down a hallway you know kind of remember that joke <laughs> yeah. like so yeah. so you like i have the standard you know truck package you got the bose stereo system exactly pack. that's 100 okay. okay i understand i got the bose you paid for the upgrade yeah i did yeah <laughs> all right guys uh i mean we today we're gonna get into what today is but uh first and foremost i want to you know say Welcome to the Fall Podcast, powered by Latitude Outdoors. Um, you know, use the code the Fall Podcast at latitudeoutdoors.com to check out all the our new merch, uh, the Carbon SS climbing sticks, the Method Two saddles, um, and any mobile gear that you're looking for. We more than likely have it. One thing I do want to talk about is our new knee pads. Mm -hmm. So we have new knee pads out, um, better structure, better double the padding, better. Uh, um, Oh boy. Now I'm going to forget straps, uh, straps, yep. better straps. And they actually are for like right and left handers. I don't know if that's the best way to say that, but you can actually get the clips on the outside of both legs now. Mm -hmm. So you're not clicking if you like to walk in with them. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, David's not a knee pad guy. I am kind of like a, like, I, I'm going to say like a 50, 50 knee pad guy. Okay. Like I dabble a little bit. Like, so last year, not in 2023, but 2022, I used them a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, until I started really playing with my saddle and getting a different fitment and like how I fit the saddle. But the way you wear your saddle, you don't have to kneel it at all. Yeah. And um, I'm kind of adopting that a little bit more. But man, there I still take the knee pads with me mm -hmm. because if there's if it's a long sit or whatever, and I'm just like, man, my legs might possibly get tired. I'll throw a knee pad on and yeah. just like take a break for a second. Yep. So key keyword long sit. You know, having, set. having, you know, you know, like you said, some guys like to wear them from the time they leave the truck to the time they get back to the truck. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's their system they use. Mm -hmm. I could see the benefit of a, you know, let's say you're out of state and you're out there for a week to 10 days or whatever the case may be. And you know, you have some all day sits coming in, you know, day three or four. It may not be bad to even have them in the pack to be able to change it up during the day. Yeah. You know, so I'm going to throw these on for two hours. Because that's the thing you notice when we, we saddle hunt that we kind of just change our positions up once in a while, especially on those all day sits that just kind of relieve some pressure here or there. For sure. And it's, it, it, it does relieve a lot of pressure mm -hmm. if you need them. So, and they, um, look, they look good too. Oh yeah. They're sick. And so we have those on the website right now are coming out with other colors. So if you're looking for like a different color and stuff like that, but 
Right now we have the gray ones on the website, so go check them out. Also, we have Aiders back in stock. So if you guys are looking for Aiders, go to latitudeoutdoors.com and uh, get the stick Aiders. So that's latitude. But next, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Helix Broadheads. We're actually going to record, as we're recording this today, we're actually recording with Bryant from Helix Broadheads tomorrow. That one's going to be going live here soon. But uh, he's going to be, it's going to be more of like a BS talk, but we're, he's excited to talk about something coming from Helix um, as far as like the sharpening of mm. the Helix broadheads and the, and the performance. Um, I've been talking about how they've had some, some questions to, to address from, from users and they're, they're really answering those questions. So, uh, if you guys are looking for any, you know, new single bevel fixed blade broadheads, and in my opinion, the most accurate fixed blade broadhead, uh, the FJ2 or the FJ4 with the bleeders, the stability in flight is unbelievable. It's really accurate. I said that's a single bevel. It penetrates really well. The blood trails are getting better. I'm not saying like they're terrible blood trails by any means. You have blood uh, and you have good blood to, to get your animal. I'm seven for seven with these heads and I've never really had issues trying to find blood. But if you're looking for that mechanical blood, blood trail, you know, it's, it's like a step below that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm mm. going to be totally transparent with you. Yeah. Like that's where it's at, but I still believe in this product. It does everything I need it to do. I get two holes no matter what. Um, and it, and it works I'm yeah. seven for seven form. So, uh, go to helixbroadheads.com. Use the code fall HX 10 on your next purchase. Uh, next Exodus outdoor gear. I believe our code is still live, um, but I, I do know we're gonna we're gonna be getting a new code that we'll be be putting in our description. So to apply the discount, you have to click on that, and then we actually get help with like we get like commission mm -hmm. on like sales. So I really want you guys to use that code as much as you possibly can, and you know we're gonna get Jake or Chad on to talk about the new cameras out. Uh, we actually haven't even had one. We still have to do figure out what we want to get for this year. Um, I know we're going to get some SD card cameras. They're mm -hmm. 4K cameras. I'm really excited to like try those out. But they're, they're rival. We ran those last year. Um, we do have some renders in the mix. Um, and then the A5. Is that what it was? The yep. A5. Because I was getting mixed up with the camera. The camera's R5. <laughs> yeah. So it's A5. The new one's A5. The new one. Yep. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about that, but I can't wait to get them here and back to this table. Mm -hmm. Nice to do a little little product review on yeah. the table. So um, check them out. They still come with the great no, or the five-year no BS warranty with theft and damage coverage. And uh, I, I'm excited just to get them in hand. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot of value in having a mixture of, of you know, a few cell cams and SD card cameras still. I agreed. I and do. We still use SD card mm -hmm. cameras. I yeah. mean, I will say for me personally, it is heavily weighted on the cell cam side. Like, sure. uh, not going to hold any, mis like, not take you down a rabbit hole that I'm not using S or cell cams. I love cell cams. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to use them until they tell me I can't use them. Yeah. Let's be totally honest. I'm so, right there with you. And and they're a time saver. Oh, a huge time saver. Like, and that's that's the way I look at it. Like, mm -hmm. it's, we're, we're family men, and you could say that we're looking for excuses. Fuck no, we're not looking for excuses. Literally, it helps save time. Yeah. In any way I can save time. I've always been under the 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 camp of, like, why work harder when you can work smarter? Mm -hmm. Like, as long as it's legal beagle and you're within ethical standards of, you know, I don't give a shit what you do. Hunt your hunt. Do it the way you want to do it. I will say if you use a cell cam where you're just constantly checking to see if your bait pile, or your food plot, if he's on there and then go shoot him. Okay. You're just an ass hat then. Yeah. Like that's, that's using them the wrong way. Yeah. You know, I, I actually just did a, a, a podcast recently with a guy and he asked me about my, my thoughts on cell cameras he, he legit asked me about mm -hmm. it and you know I, I had said my my first answer was right off the bat of well first off I just said you know I just I don't think it'd be an issue if everyone just stayed in their own lane with stuff if you like them you like stay them. in your if lane you, if you don't like them you don't like them but for me it was two things that if I look back at since I've started using cell cameras one is the time the amount of more time it put me you know being able to be at home especially in the summertime that that's more that's that's where I seen the direct you know 
reflection of of not being out in the woods all the time checking cameras moving blah 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 but the one thing that i think i'm probably most grateful about cell cams is it's it's put a uh a direct like correlation with with white tails and weather patterns uh cold fronts warm fronts temperature change uh pressure stuff like that where it's, and i'm not even talking about during just the season guys i'm talking about like you know july to january you know when you're getting those pictures and you're you know you you may be at home and you're like dude it's it's hotter than shit out like why is he up on his feet right now or something like that where it's yeah. like there's a lot of information to be learned not just about maybe where to hunt, but like why and, and, and when to hunt type, mm-hmm. of, type of scenarios. Yeah, I agree. And if I think cell cams get a a quick finger point to because it's an easy sword to fall on for mm-hmm. people. Well, in, yeah, okay. Okay. It's This may be a little bit of a hot take, Aaron, but this is something I thought about because after that guy asked me, he, like, you know how it is. Like someone yeah. asks you a question on a podcast, maybe, maybe that... Uh, no one's asked you before is um you think about it kind of that next day and man if i would have answered it a little different but i thought about this a decade ago if if a a, a stranger walks into this exact room right here studio a they walk in and 10 years ago they would say i could kill these deer if i if i hunted the same land you did that's what they would say mm-hmm. now it's like I could kill these same deer if I had as many cell cams as you have. Or it's like, man, is is it just is there's a part of it's like a jealousy issue, I think. Oh, I think part, it's 100% partial. a jealousy. You know what I mean? Where it's like, man, it's you you start thinking about that and it's like, why, you know, they they changed their tone about, well, I could hunt, kill those same deer if I had the same farm Aaron has. Mm-hmm. Or now it's now it's they just direct it towards something else where, you know, success breeds hatred a lot okay. of times. Let me ask you this. Why do you, why doesn't the finger get pointed to Onyx, Spartan Forge, I don't know. Yeah. Hunt Wise, all these mapping apps? Why, like, think how, like, it's so easy to go and, not even to go, it's so easy for us to dial up right here. Uh, we've been doing it on a piece mm-hmm. of public in a different state that we want to go check out this year. It's so easy to do that. Yeah, I I think that I think the mapping apps have made it more of an equal playing field than what s- cellular trail cameras have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're, they're all tools. Yeah, and there's no doubt, that, like you said, you know, like they they can all be used in the bad way, and that that's that's I think natural naturally as humans that that's what happens. There's always what how they say it, one bad apple in the mm-hmm. group, or that's you know same with the drone stuff. One bad apple ruins it for everyone. Same with the cell cam stuff, and I I can see like. I get a lot of times both sides of the story, you know, the argument with cell cams is, yeah, is it taking away, you know, um, woodsmanship, you know? Yeah, maybe in a way, but, you know, the guys that are have those cameras really, really dialed in outside of being on the field edge, they, they've also scouted that yeah. to find that where it's at, you know? But I, I, you know, when you talk about the mapping apps, that right there, I think that's more of a, of a big change in anything because, like you said, we can sit here today and dial in, you know, if, if we want to go to Oklahoma or Texas this next year, we can dial in really, really dang close. Hell, we can dial in with that mapping app where we might want to put a trail camera. hundred percent. We can do that, you yeah. know, but, but also like it's a tool. Mm-hmm. People just treat it as a tool. And guess what? These tools are available to everyone. Mm-hmm. If someone says, yeah. well, I can't afford Onyx. Well, I work, you know, Go work more hours, work some overtime. I can't afford two two more cell cameras. Well, I don't know, sell something. You know what I mean? Where it's like well, it's available for everyone if you want it. There, there's a habit out there that everybody does, whether it's smoking darts, whether it's drinking beer, whether it's gambling, mm-hmm. whatever. You know, last night we we went to the to the you know the side door store, or whatever. There's Seven Eleven. We have a Seven Eleven mm-hmm. after Peyton's basketball game and. Um, we stopped in there and Peyton and I went in to get some stuff and my wife was in the, like, I just parked right outside the front and I, we get back in the car and she goes, do you see how much a pack of Marlboros are? Mm-hmm. A, one pack. They're like nine fifty eight. Yeah. A pack. Yeah. Like, you know how many people like that have an issue? Like how many packs they smoke in a day? Possibly like two. Mm-hmm. Like that's, you know, even if you do one, that's, that's 10 bucks a day. Shit adds up. 365 days. If you're doing a pack a day, 
Yeah. It's a lot of money. Yeah. So like just, you know, maybe you don't need that nice vehicle. Maybe you don't need to freaking bruise your lungs and kill yourself. Like, yeah. I mean, whatever it's, you want to do. All, but it's, all, it's all sacrifice. And I don't, I don't even it care is. what you do in life. A lot of that, it always circles back to sacrifice about mm. how bad you really want something. Yeah. All right. So uh, I love that conversation. I know we're kind of, I feel like we're always on a time crunch and it sucks, but <laughs> um, Exodus Outdoor Gear, go to ExodusOutdoorGear.com. Check out the new Rival A5. It's a 32 megapixel camera. Um, it's upgraded five megapixel pixel uh image sensor improved battery life which is wild um that you can actually do that and uh it's got better daytime and nighttime photos which i know it does like mm-hmm. you see the the comparisons and i've talked to jake about it um like they, they're just better and then they have the lift 4k ultra that's the one i really want to try yeah that's gonna SD be card. sweet so yeah go check them out next is is garmin i mean there's no secret here the a1 i is is crazy and there's a couple things we're going to do a little better job explaining some of the features like on these things, because I want, I want to almost pick out a feature every time we do this to like talk about, and there's so many things on here that we don't even know, Yeah. but like, I want to talk about like the dynamic leveling feature, which is like, let's say you're going to go to full draw and there's like a limb in the way. Like if you have the dynamic leveling feature on, it'll tell you if you're going to clear that limb or not. Okay. Like, yeah. How ridiculous is that? Mm-hmm. Not ridiculous in a bad way, but that's like, like you go to full draw and it's like, oh man, there's a limb in the way. But like, if you have that dynamic feature on there, it's going to tell you if you're good or not. Yeah. And if you're good, you know, how, like people still kind of, there's, there's a lot of good. There's a lot of people who are like, man, I want to get a Garmin, but there's always that one bad guy. That's bad like apple. <laughs> bad apple that, you know, likes to try to find out the bad. And really what they're doing is they're just like sitting on the price. Like they don't want to spend that money, which I get. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's sacrifice. We just talked about it. Yep. But what I'm saying is a lot of people are saying too, that it's like cheating. I'm going to throw you a different angle. Like is trying to be more ethical cheating because trying to eliminate a, a step in the process of ranging, dialing or ranging and gap shooting and guessing How are you being more ethical than me Mm -hmm. when you're guessing, could be guessing, and I'm not? Yeah. I go to full draw, hit the button, ranges, it gives me the most precise pin I can have, and then we're going. We're going, we're going hot. Mm -hmm. Like, how is that not like something that's like, take my wallet? Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and that's the thing. It's, I, someone asked me recently about, about the Garmin, and I, I was kind of talking to him and (laughs) explaining some items, uh, you know, features about it. And, I started to think that, you know, like this last year was my first year that I used a Garmin. And the one thing I noticed is that like, I'm not, you know, before I had a single pin sight, great sight, single pin sight and a range finder. So I would range. Now I'd take the sight and dial it just to exactly what the range finder did. Mm -hmm. My Garmin's not doing anything different. It's doing the same thing. It's taking a range and dialing that pin exactly where it's supposed to be. But now that I, I now that I don't have to take the rangefinder out of my pocket, range it, put it back in, dial in the sight, what I'm getting to do now, I'm paying attention to that deer's body language yep. more. I'm I'm looking for his shoulder to open up more because I don't feel rushed as rushed. Yeah, there things are gonna happen. There's you're still gonna make the shot either bad shot because why? Because you still have to make the shot. Mm-hmm. The thing is not making the shot for you. Yeah, you know and, I mean? and and you found out on your first yeah. year this year you yeah. you swung and missed yeah yeah and that's the thing is like you at know, like eight yards eight yards yeah eight yards you know where it was like you, you know i thought it's a slam dunk you know what i mean and lit- literally i look back at that and was like david like you didn't even you didn't even take the time to go through your process you know mm-hmm. what i mean where it was like no that's not how it works that yeah. is absolutely not how it works but the also is don't let me mis- make a mistake and give me a chance, a second chance, because I won't make the same mistake. 12 ring, maybe. <laughs> I won't make the same mistake again, you know? Yeah. It's funny, though, because that was your first deer with a Garmin. Mm-hmm. My first deer was the Hambino. And the first, when I went to full draw with him, because you, you're so ingrained your whole life in how to shoot a bow. And, th- and this Garmin is something different. Mm-hmm. You have to learn. And I practiced a lot with it. But yeah. in, until you get into the moment of the truth and, and really work on it, that's in, I, I freaked out. I bugged out. I'm like, Oh God. And I double, I double hit the pins and it gave me my stack of pins and then it brought me back. Yeah. And then I, like after ha- killing him, 
and you know being removed from that a little bit and and the dopamine hit coming down and stuff like that and the adrenaline it was like there was there was a hiccup in the process i had to figure that out Mm -hmm. you know and it's just trying to figure out that process like you said like i just didn't slow the moment down and just trust the site Mm -hmm. and if you trust the site and let it do its job you will be better yeah all that yeah and and just and just using it I mean, that's what we're doing yeah. right now. You know, we're, this whole month we've been shooting five arrows a day and we're yep. just, we're still building that muscle memory with that site mm-hmm. also. Yeah. So yeah, that's Garmin. Go to Garmin.com. Check those out. Buck Bourbon is next. TFP20 is the, is the code for Buck Bourbon. You can look at the distiller's knife kit, the eight piece harvest field kit, the no slip comfort handles includes the caping knife, the skinning knife, the gut hook, the bone saw, the pen light, and the long and short gut gloves, which is always a plus for prima donnas like myself because i love to <laughs> use gloves yeah i do um they got awesome food plots see which david and i are getting ready to put our orders in for our spring plots because david is going to be doing some plots this year which i'm excited about um and i'm going to be doing some as well so check them out buckbourbon.com next is prime g5prime.com check out the all new rvx series bow center grip technology the core cam the picatinny the new picatinny systems that uh, is built right into the bow We've been shooting them a lot this this February, five mm-hmm. arrows a day, like you said, um, holding true to that. And boy, shoulders are feeling good. Yeah, you know, we're we're almost two weeks into this, and we're we're feeling good here. So well, what I'm looking forward to, Aaron, is is even if it may be not five arrows a day, but I'm going to keep this up all the way right to attack this are year. You? Okay. Well, and and it's you know just consistently shooting and and like that where it's like. I listen. I've been there. I've been the tack twice so far, and it's not like I don't practice in the off season because mm-hmm. I I truly enjoy shooting my boat. Like I love grabbing that prime off that rack and shooting that thing. Yep. I truly do. But I can tell, like I try to increase it a lot going into the total archery challenge, where it was like, man, I kind of wish I would have done that back in January yeah. and February. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wait till May this year. I'm not gonna wait till April. I'm I'm months ahead. Yep. It's not gonna. I'm not gonna get tired on that mountain. For sure. For sure. I like that. Um, yeah. And they have, they have, uh, six different camera options. If you are looking for a new, new like color option, you can do 11 different solid color options and they have the G fade as well. So G five prime.com or go check out your local prime dealer. Lastly, but certainly not least America's best bow strings. We were just looking at the, our new launch strings. I just put mm. one on the Rev X the other day. Oh, it's sick. Uh, <laughs> it's the launch X string America's best bow strings.com use code the fall and check out the new trailhead camo they have. It is filthy. I have it on the Rev X and I'm getting one from my RVX too. So <laughs> there it is. But Hey, let's, let's roll right into this because, yeah. um, I think that was, you know, it was a long I, I get it was a long sponsor read, but I, I'd like to try to keep that going as far as like trying to, you know, explain how we use these things in our thoughts and processes. Mm-hmm. Like we went down a lot of good stuff about cell cams there. You know, it's not, we're not just saying this cause we have to say it. Like we do believe in this stuff when we use this stuff every day when we're, when we're doing hunting stuff. So it's like, we believe in it. And we wouldn't be telling you that if, if we didn't believe in it. So yeah. we're not going to, we're not going to steer you wrong. Um, but everybody, you know, listening. So David and I, we used to listen to some podcasts and I don't even want to name drop or anything like that, but we, we kind of got like to the point where those particular podcasts that we listen to, we don't even listen to them anymore because, and they're still out there, but because we really liked the host and co-host BS sessions the most. Mm-hmm. Like it was almost a drag when they had other people on. Sure. You know? Um we still listened to it. We did. But like and then co host would leave and then, you know, doing their sep whatever. Uh and I don't wanna I don't wanna I love recording with you. Mm-hmm. Like literally if everybody would be okay with it, I think we could record a hundred episodes, just you and I, like, because we can talk about a lot of this stuff. We're comfortable with each other. We can do it face to face. And like, it's just so much more relaxing sure. to do it. So what we're going to do this year is we're going to do one BS session a month, at least, um, whether, you know, we're going to try to do it face to face, um, and to have like at least 12 BS sessions. Now, you know, we're still going to do the season series. Uh, we're trying to figure out our fall, you know, it's going to be an ongoing process this, this summer and, 
you know, I'm hoping to draw Iowa and wait, what you might go where <laughs> Iowa. Ooh. It's a good chance. <laughs> uh, I'm on that like cusp though with my points. So. Yeah. What's what, where's your where's your uh, gut gut feeling with it right now? Literally, you're at four points. I'm at four going to five. Sitting on four points right now. Sitting on four. Um, I think I'm like seventy thirty. Seventy thirty. That I'd go. Okay. But uh, that I'm gonna draw, and I would be higher. If I knew a little bit more about the system, I think. Yeah. But uh, my buddy Chad at Midwest Antler Company, I'm going to go hunt with him. Um, I believe that's what I'm going to do if if he'll have me back. But uh, he, I was talking to him the other day, and he was talking about how all of his hunters that he had in last year that had four points last year, they all drew. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I'm going off of. Okay. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm in the clear. Do you think uh, – I heard – I've heard, you know, not only just the popularity of, of – Iowa and travel hunting and that, you know, that's all there. There's a huge formula why point creeps an issue, but I've also heard that a lot of it was because of that, you know, that 2019, that 2020 season during all, you know, all the COVID bullshit that some people, you know, kind of backed out and, and it just became, it it kind of threw the whole algorithm off of how often people are drawn. Do you think that that levels it? Like, are, are we going to get to a point? Maybe we are right now, you know, we're, you know, four or five years later where it's like, does that somewhat start to fix itself, or do you think this the the drawing? If oh man, I don't know if I'll draw with four or five points, will that always be an issue? My personal thought is like the new, like, and I only know the zone that I go to, and so like that was almost a guarantee to draw with three. Yeah, and I drew with three in nineteen, and then COVID happened. I think that new three is four, and mm. I think it's starting to level off. Yeah. I really do. I, I hope think, it does. I do too. Um, you know, I did hear that that tag allegation alloc- mm-hmm. allocation for five hundred out. I heard that that didn't pass. Yeah, I think it. I believe that got shut down. Did it? Okay. Because I was going to talk to Chad about that, and he'd be great to have on because mm-hmm. I'd like to get his perspective. We still may, um, but if it if it didn't go through, then. I don't know if there's a point. Yeah, because really. I, I tell you what, the people of Iowa, the the residents of Iowa, like they, uh, you know, they they want people to come to Iowa and have a good experience. Sure. But they're very passionate about it, man. They they anyone that tries to come in there and change up kind of what they're doing, boy, they're not scared to run them out of town, and I I respect that, you know. But because, dude, I I don't know about you. But when I when I think of like how many more hunts I may have in Iowa, mm, and when I, I don't even want to talk about it, when I say <laughs> that it's it's not saying like you know life's coming to an end, but just being able to go to Iowa and, and hunt the way I love to hunt, where it's like, damn, dude, you start talking every five six years, because like you said, you have four points. It hasn't been four years because it'll be another year. You know what I mean? Like you hunted, you had to buy four years worth of points. Then that's five years later. I know five, you know what I mean? Then you go, okay, if I, if, if you're fortunate enough to draw this year and you, you you know, you got such a good thing going where you're at. Like, I'm not going to try to tell you to like, Hey, why don't you go to a lesser zone that you can draw more often? No, like not with the experiences that you've had in Iowa where it's like, dude, five years uh, now you know five years again from now and then another five years like two hunts in the next 10 years like i don't want i don't want that 10 no. years from now like I no know. way well and the, the thing is is because i'm not the guy that's going to be like well i'm just going to start taking a gun and going every year every other year that's right. okay if you want to do that that doesn't that doesn't do it for me so if all all i have is three four maybe five more iowa trips then that's what i got yeah, you know? I mean, but, but that's the thing. Like, think about that realistically. Mm-hmm. Five more Iowa trips that could take a span over twenty five years, twenty five years. And I, I hope, you know, like, I hope to God we're still hunting. But even if we are, Aaron, I don't. We're not going to be hunting the way we do today. No, it just it, you know, twenty five years from now. I mean, you're you're way older than I am. So you're oh god, your here body, we go. <laughs> your body is going to be just. You no, know, you won't. For be everybody able to listening, do that. I am not older than DJ. <laughs> he is. He's he's pushing the forty button everybody Easy. next year pal <laughs> number four oh 
I am far from there right now. But uh, I like I, I gotta give you shit about it sometimes. I feel old as shit though. I can tell you that my right arm, my shoulder, I could feel like I could freaking cut off and it'd feel way better right now. Yeah, I feel, that, like, that's I feel like one of my lifts I'm doing right now, I'm doing it kind of wrong. <laughs> that's that's the thing. that's the thing. It's like you you got a doctor's appointment. The doctor's gonna go in there. He's like, what's wrong? And you're like, well this left arm this right leg you know and the doctor's gonna be like man you know like when did you start noticing and they're and you're probably gonna be like it's when i started using the shake weight <laughs> fucking shake weight <laughs> just so, 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 so. it's got a little rattle in it whatever oh yeah so anyway these these bs podcasts it's literally you know that's what we're going to do. They're, they're the most fun for us, for me anyway, they really are. Like it's, uh, you know, this is in year seven of this podcast and I still love talking to guys, but if you're a podcast enthusiast, I'd be lying to you if I wasn't noticing like regurgitation Mm -hmm. so much, you know, and you're going to hear it on here too. Like you're going to hear some regurgitation. It's just cause that's, we love to talk about it. We, that's what we do. Um, hunting is, there's no rocket science around hunting. There's no stones to unturn anymore. There really isn't. Like it's all four years ago. I think there was some information still out there that was like groundbreaking. Now there's not. Mm-hmm. There's not. It's all experiences. It's behind the photo. Mm-hmm. You know, like you talk about what you pride yourself on, and I think it's unbelievable. I think it's awesome. Um, you're gonna hear more stories. You're gonna hear BS, and you're gonna hear swearing. You're gonna hear. You're just gonna hear whatever, yeah. whatever we want to do, and. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's what is so powerful about podcasts is, is to me, you know, I've, I've been a long time podcast junkie for one reason almost is because when it's, it's a lot of unfiltered, mm -hmm. but a good podcast, you know, you may have 10 topics that you have on your paper. I hope you only get through two or three because the rabbit yeah. holes are so deep that you can't come out of them. I know. And that's that's where and I think that's where you get the best stuff. It 100% is. I mean, we're already 42 minutes into this and yeah. I know we went a little <laughs> long on like the partner stuff, but like that's part of it. That mm-hmm. we 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 did throw codes in there, but there was real life shit in there that we yeah. were talking about. So, um time saving and like I said cell cams and whatever. But that that's what we're gonna get. And I, I've got some questions for DJ today. Okay. Um, he doesn't know what I'm gonna ask him. And this is what I'm gonna probably do for a lot of these BS sessions to just kind of come up. I wanna throw some relevant content. Like we're mm-hmm. in February right now. And we're probably gonna run these a lot on Friday episodes. I know we've kind of gotten away from that, but I, I wanna I wanna throw some more Friday episodes in um to keep that keep that train going too. So um First and first and foremost, I gotta ask you, like, I don't know, it was probably a week ago. You screwed up on something. You were out scouting, and you called me. Oh, okay, I remember now. And you're like, yeah, dude, I fucked yep. up. Yep. What I did remember. you fuck up on? Okay, so um, I went and scouted a, a small piece of ground, and I talk about this often. I don't get, I don't get all day long scouting trips. I get an hour, two hours, three, four hours usually is, is really the max of, of a day of scouting for me. And I, I had like a, you know, hour and hour and a half time window and it was a beautiful sunny day in which I got my takes on, on, you know, it's always nice to be out there when the sun's shining, but sometimes it, everything is almost too bright while I was scouting. Well, I was trying to think, you know, what could I go hit an hour and a half and, there's there's a little part of me recently that I I've been Jones in just for some new some new ground to go look at. Well, I decided on a a, a piece of ground that I have permission on. I've had per- permission on it for probably close to ten years now, but I I honestly haven't walked in almost like two years. And there's a reason behind it. Um, little you know some of the background of the the particular piece of property is. This piece can hold some of the best whitetails I've ever seen in Michigan, antler size caliber wise. And it has some reasonings for that. And I, I'm not going to ex- speak about all those reasonings on the podcast. Um, it's just surrounded by some good stuff. We'll put it that way. And, but I've learned through the years, it's tough to hunt because it, of how it lays out. It's, it's very young. So it's, it's very, it's, it's thick 
but like the huntable trees just aren't there. You know what I mean? Where yep. and I I don't I've never messed around with food plots and stuff like that. So I don't have equipment to try to maybe do that or or whatever the case may be. And I've also learned that you can pretty much, you know, if if you let's say if you've hunted it for ten years, maybe one or two of those years that you'd have a good buck on there during the summertime. Outside of that, you can forget about the cell, you know, not cell cam, but trail cam pictures in the summertime. But eventually they'll show up in the fall. But it's it's one of those pieces that you just have to be there at the right time when they show up. And it's arguably out of all the pieces I've hunted, I struggle with that one the most of trying to learn those little windows that they want to use it. There, there's not, there's never, you know, like a rhyme or reason to it a lot. You know, it's very, very randomness. There'll be years that like a deer will call, you know, call it home and he won't leave. He will just not leave. And there's other years where it's like, it feels like a ghost town. Anyways, I haven't hunted it and touched it in a few years because I I hit a, a couple year span that there just wasn't anything good on it. it. You know, when I was scouting it, there was no big sign on it. I wasn't cutting any big tracks in the, in it was a, a place I've, I would always use SD card cameras to at least soak and just see. I went through a two or three window year window that there just, there wasn't shit on there. At least nothing on there that I was interested in. Well, and then on top of it, there were some, uh, there was some industrial land type development that was going to, that had started. And I, I was just like, Oh, maybe this is it for the end. This is probably it for this property. No big bucks for a few years. Then they were developing, you know, some land around it and it was going to change. Like there's no doubt it was going to have an impact on this place. And so last year I decided, uh, I kind of went against something that I, I, I've always had like a rule in my playbook that I will always at least put a trail camera out on everything I have permission on to just see, cause you just never know. Uh, you just never, you never know where that next 130 inch buck may show up at here in Michigan. You just never know. Well, I didn't put a trail camera out there at all, at all. And it's not a place you can glass. It's, it's, it's very unique. And when I decided to go out there the other day and walk, it took me for the first time all year for, yeah, I haven't walked in almost two years and it took me 20 to probably 30 minutes before I realized that I fucked up and I'm not saying that it's nothing's 100% in deer hunting. Right. But the sign I seen was that this isn't little deer sign. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even saying how big his antlers are, but I can tell you that whatever deer was using that piece or calling it home this last fall was a big bodied, like mature deer, because we're talking about, we're talking about cedars that were rubbed that have the cedar tree was full of branches and he took from like the waist, you know, waist up on me all the way up to my chin and just broke off all the branches to it. They're all just hanging. Off Almost of looks it. like somebody took a pulse on there and just yes. trimmed the whole middle of the tree out. Yes. And then, and then found some other big, you know, like they, in, they're not, they're not old. They're new. Cause they didn't have any old markings on them, but mm-hmm. like the type of rubs that you're like, dude, that looks like a signpost rub. That thing looks like it's been there forever or it wasn't. It was from this year. And it was just, it was very clear that, yeah, I fucked up. I, I went against what I kind of, that one of the rules in my playbook and is that deer dead? Dude, I have no clue. There's a, there's a, there's a good possibility of it. Maybe I'll even treat it that he is dead. But the one thing for sure, like we talked about a little bit earlier, like I, I don't, I'm not saying never, never say never, but I don't make mistakes twice usually. And like that, that mistake right there, it won't happen again. And there may not be another big deer on that property for two or three years. Heck maybe in five. I don't know. Right. Because the, this, this, this <clears throat> land being developed around it, I thought was going to change it. And maybe it was maybe that two or three years that it I changed went, it, it changed it. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Now that it's all settled down, the, the, you know, all, all of the, the areas finished, it's all developed. The deer have gotten used to it and maybe they're okay with it now. Well, and, and I've, 
I have some properties where the land around it was getting developed Mm -hmm. before. And I saw the same thing for the year it was getting developed and then slowly trickled into the the following year. It was different. Mm -hmm. It was different a hundred percent. And, um, it since has, has came back to normal, but like, it just goes to show you a good piece of ground is a good piece of ground. Doesn't matter how, what the size of it is. Yeah. And it, the habitat and whatever terrain might be there, whatever they like, it's there for, and they're there for a reason. They'll tolerate it once that direct pressure is out of there. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's wild to think about because, you know, I, I've read something about, about, coyotes how adaptive they are that they're in they're in all 50 states nowadays like they can adapt to anything and we're just like man whitetails do too we watch enough stuff on on youtube about urban hunting and then you got guys hunt them in the mountains and you guys you got guys that hunt them in hill country and you got guys that hunt them in florida right where like the, the animals will adapt you know and and you made a good point that day you were like yeah david but you you were on good deer all year like you were invest invest well in- your mind was other places i yeah. mean october 4th you kill a good buck mm-hmm. and then big berry was your sole focus yep basically and, yeah and and you were right like you nailed it but to like and and it makes a lot of sense but still it's like i let my guard down just a mm-hmm. little I get bit it. and that's what I, all i need is one sd card camera you know what i mean like that's that that's a perfect piece of property where it's like you know Going into the season, I should have simply said it's July or August. I haven't had anything on here in a few years. Let's go put an SD card camera out here. I'll come back and check it, you know, at the beginning of the season or midway to, through season. And guess what? If I would have went and checked the card, I would have seen the sign also. Mm-hmm. And and here's the thing: even though I was invested in those other bucks, this other, you know, whatever buck that calls home, he could have been bigger than anything I was hunting. Yep. But even if he wasn't bigger, maybe he was more killable. Yeah, who knows? You know what I mean? That's the unknown where it's like, I, you know, I'm not mad about like the bucks I was hunting this season. I'm not, I'm not mad that I wasn't hunting that buck. I'm just mad that I let my guard down a little bit. I know better. Like I, I have, we talk about this a lot. Like you have a process. I have a process. Like we have like a systematic approach of, of how we, we hunt. And well, I also believe like my my process is arguably more important out of season than it is in season and i slipped up right there mm-hmm. i let my foot off the gas just a little bit but i won't do it again like <laughs> i in it like i said there may not be a big buck on there for a few years again yeah but but i a couple of lessons learned don't let your foot off the gas and two like i've never i've never dealt with land being developed on by one of my properties before i've never dealt with that Mm-hmm. I've hunted places that are already developed around it. I've hunted places that don't have any developments around it. But now I'm learning. I got to adjust. Like I got to adjust just like the deer had to adjust to it. So. Yeah. And you talked about you slipped up. Like I realized the last, like the last week that I've slipped up a little bit, the last couple of years, you know, before being like a hundred percent mobile, I was very much a, uh, like a, like a set stand person. Mm-hmm. you know, and, and put stands up and I've kind of gotten away from it. And, um, I'm going to come back to it. It's going to be a good mix. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm going to totally negate it. Like I've still got tree stands. I still have, you know, other stuff that I can utilize yep. because there was times that, you know, maybe I didn't have time. Like, you know, we talk about time is a big thing. And there was times this year where like my wife's job, she's a nurse, uh, but she gets out at different times and it's mm-hmm. never a set time. Like she just literally texted me was like, I can get the kids today. Mm-hmm. So like, I don't have to leave at three now just yeah. so you know, <laughs> but, um, uh, like just right there, it's like, okay, I knew going into it that like, if tonight I wouldn't be able to hunt right there, a text, I can get the kid yeah, or get the kids. Okay. I'm going to go hunting, you know, but you might only have 20 minutes or a half hour to get to a spot. And even though I think the mobile setup or system I have is the most clean, sleek, fastest thing that I can do, mm-hmm. there is still times where it's like, I know me, I'm going to go to an area and I'm going to sit there for 20 minutes on the ground trying to figure out what tree I need to get into. Yeah. If I have areas where I know I can just go slip in, mm-hmm. that's 
key. And then like morning hunting too. I absolutely hate setting up stuff in the morning. We were in Kansas. We never set up in the morning. Mm -hmm. We always hunted something the night before and then we'd go back to it in the morning. Like yep. it's, it's nice having something already set up to sure. slip in on, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of the small acre stuff I do like no go. Like that was a set stand. I hybrid hunt. Like I knew the stand was there, but I did hunt out of my saddle. I used the stand for the platform because it just set up better. But if I would have had to get in there where he was bedded this year and hang something 83 degrees with no wind and no sound to like mask, it would have been nearly impossible. Yeah, it, it's it's another tool in the toolbox, dude. Mm -hmm. And especially like a lot of the listeners have heard you talk about, you know, hunting a one acre track of land, you know, mm -hmm. or like, Dude, there's a time and place for those exact tools to yeah. be used. And th that's a perfect scenario, you know. It's just, and that's another thing, too. Like you said, you got away from having some, you know, or sometimes it's easy to like maybe see, like, well, all these other guys are hunting this way. I'm going to hunt this. But it's like, no, Aaron has to have his own process. Mm -hmm. And he's got X, Y, and Z for tools in his tool bag. That's important to have, you know what I mean? Yeah. And know that where it's like, dude, like, a hybrid style of hunting and i'm not talking about a saddle of it a tree stand type of thing but it's a hybrid style of it's like you're not just you're not locked into only one way of hunting yeah you know that that's that's so important don't get one dimensional yeah yeah literally yeah i mean it's it's same as it's same as like i don't like hunting out of ground blinds because i feel like i can't see i, I naturally want to be up in a tree mm -hmm. but i also know there's value in spots look what i just talked about earlier i talked about this piece of land very few trees to hunt from but I'm, i was so stuck back in the day of having to be in a tree that i probably missed some good hunting because i was so stuck in one way of hunting yeah you know or it's like you, you got to be adaptive some of the best whitetail hunters that they can just adapt to the situations mm -hmm. yeah and like I talk about being one dimensional. It's like a big basketball term. My daughter is playing basketball right now and still learning everything, but she's right handed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, you know, I think this is the time where we should start like working on your left hand too. Yeah. Like you don't want to like the defender to always know you're going right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Your left hand should be just as good as your right hand or vice versa. So it's like, you know, be, don't be one dimensional. Mm hmm. Yep. You know, so, so, so you're going to add that in this next year. You're going to add some, for sure. some preset stuff. In. Yeah. And the other thing is too, my dad, like he, he saddle hunted this year, method two set up. He's 60. Dad, don't kill me on this. He's either 66 or 67. Mm -hmm. One of the two. I can't remember. Okay. But like in my dad, he's no bigger than you. He's actually probably smaller than you. He's like really small. And, um, he loved it. Yeah. Like running and gunning. Yeah. Like he did. But there was times he would be like calling me like, where should I go sit? Like, yeah. and I don't want to have to have him worry about hanging a set that all the time. So mm -hmm. I think if him and I, um, you know, and I even talked to Austin about it too. And Pat and like, cause we hunt with them as well. And like, let's get some really good set stand locations where all of us can like rotate if we need to, but we all have mobile setups to go Yeah, if we need to adjust. Yep. You know, yeah. which is, I know Austin had a really good hunt this year on a, um, at the family farm at, uh, in the morning and he just kind of went on a whim at a, at a, in a pre hung already mm -hmm. and rattled in TJ Watt, like out of nowhere. Yeah. And like, he just went to a pre and I, I'll bet you if I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'll bet you, he probably didn't want to hang a stand mm -hmm. or hang a mobile cause he saddle hunts too, but probably didn't really feel like doing that in the morning. This is like, I know that stands there. Let's go there. Yeah. You know, which is key. Yeah. And you, you, you think about, you think about, we, we talk about historical information, you know, historical data on, on bucks or historical information on like particular spots kind of thing. Well, when you, when you start building that historical information on spots, like there comes a point where it's like, listen, a good funnel is a good funnel. Yep. A good pinch is a good pinch. And so I think, you know, when I try to think, like, if you had to put it in tiers, where's the most value for, like, a preset? Probably the rut, number one, right? And maybe two, early season, if you're glassing. You know what I mean? Where, like, oh, yeah. Where you can just slip in there, opening night, you've been watching the deer do something and, and do that, where it's like, I, I thought that, you know, because even, even though, you know, I've only mobile hunted for the last 12 years, I still find myself going and setting up in the good spots during mm -hmm. the rut where it's like, it's the same spot. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm just returning and hanging the stuff. But, yep. 
Yeah, so I, th- I think that'd be one of my biggest things, you know, to uh, hone in on this year. Yeah, I like it, dude. I yeah. like it. What else? What, anything else you want to do, change up for the year? Mm. Uh, yeah, my mindset. I think... Okay. Uh, I think uh, I've been I've been having a buzzword just to myself lately mm-hmm. of just like hunting my own hunt, mm-hmm. just uh, doing it for me, you know. And I told you like very much when I started this podcast, like I felt like I needed to be somebody. Sure, you know, I started the podcast because I wanted to get back to my roots and of Michigan and and when like shooting like just a, like a buck was cool. And like, and, and, you know, the big deer thing and, and you're only cool if you kill big deer and like all that stuff. Like, I really hope, I really hope anybody that I've ever talked to or told a story to, or really hope I don't come across as like an asshole. Like I'm some like big buck killer and that's it. Cause that's the last thing I, and I could see that even though I didn't think that way, like I could have came across that way. Like that is so not me. Mm-hmm. That is so not me. Like, yeah, I, I do want to, I do want to kill better deer, yeah. but that like, you know, in 2020, what was it? 2023. No. Yeah. No. 2022. I killed that, um, double main beam buck yep. that, um, uh, tax Jimmy Jimmy has got right now. And, um, you know, he was like, just because I scored him, he scored like 111. Yeah. You know, he, I wasn't disappointed that I killed that deer at all, but like in the grand scheme of things, when you bring him into this room, it's like, boy, he's like one of the smaller deer. Sure. And like a little bit of me was like, damn, people probably wonder, or like I cared a little bit about what people thought. Sure. You know? Um, why, why, and I fucking hate that. Why, why do you think you, why do you think you felt like that though? Um, because I feel like, um, uh, not meaning to, but a lot of my hunting has been on camera where Mm -hmm. people can see it. Yep. And because I've been in other States and killed some good deer and that I feel like people, I, I, I get the. I get the vibe that people hold you to like a standard Mm -hmm. and I cared about that standard. Yeah. It's almost like you were just a product of your environment over the last decade. hundred percent was because Mm -hmm. you got to, yeah, I know you know this, but everybody's got to realize like from 2012 until 2000 and, um, 21, 22 ish. A decade. Yeah. 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 I mean, 2011. So it had been 10, almost 11 years. Yeah. Um, I hunted the TV world. Yep. Like I, I lived the TV world every day, mm-hmm. like the fantasy land TV world where, I mean, I got to call home 4,000 acres and of continuous ground in Kansas Yeah. and hunt to this day, the best piece of ground I've ever stepped foot on for whitetails in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Like, seen some of the most beautiful pieces of ground that you could ever see and and see 28 bucks over 140 in one day <laughs> like like literally yeah. that we had a stand called the old 28 and because chris rattled in 28 different bucks in one day that's out unreal. of that stand that's in the unreal route. yeah yeah like it's so like i it just got to the point where it was like that's what i did mm-hmm. and and you know, I started the podcast in 2018. So it took about six years to realize, like, start like, man, this is just not me. Like, I love doing that. I love, like, it was so cool. I I don't want to take any of that back because there was really cool. I got to see a lot of cool. I got to learn a lot about big deer. I got to learn about farms. I got Mm -hmm. to learn about terrain, learn about that kind of stuff. But like, I wouldn't take that back for that instance, but it kind of molded like a tumor on me of like, if that makes sense, it might not be a good analogy, but of like, this is how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, that's not how I grew up. Yeah. You know, well, and it's, it's, it's a very unique situation because, you know, when I think of back a decade ago, you know, like that was, you know, the, the hunting world and, and, 
you know, or the TV world in the hunting space was, it was awesome, dude. Like I can remember, like I subscribed to, you know, all the, you know, the outdoor channel, the pursuit channel, the sportsman channel, all, all of it, you know, cause I loved watching it. I didn't care maybe, you know, maybe even back then a decade ago, maybe it wasn't so much that I realized how much different it was compared to what I had to hunt. I just like to watch it. I enjoyed it, you know, and, but like, it's, I don't think it's, it, it, it's not like it's something bad, right? It's, you were a product of your situ or product of your environment, but it's like, it's also molded you into the person you were today. Where like, you had a, a dream out of high school. Like you knew what you wanted to do and you mm -hmm. went and chased it and you fulfilled those, a lot of those dreams. But I'm guessing like somewhere along the way you, like you were starting to realize it's like, yeah, this is this is unrealistic for a lot of people in this world. You know, it's a lot yeah. different, you know? And, and I, I think then I think it was literally the perfect recipe was brewing after all those years, then, you know, you want to start the podcast and, and kind of get back to your roots that you were worried what people were going to think. I think a lot of us as naturally as human beings, we worry about what other people think. But the one thing that I can say is, the most enjoyable hunting is when you, you just do it on your own terms. Yeah. That, that is so enjoyable. Like it, you know, that you just do it how Aaron wants to do it. And that only how Aaron wants to do it for no one else. Yeah. No one else at all. You know, your family is still going to love you no matter what happens at the end of the day, depend, no matter how your season goes, they're still going to love you. You right. know what I mean? Where it's like, and when you start having that, start hunting like that, n not like a no cares kind of hunting, but truly doing it for yourself. You know, like I, that's, I got some friends that we talk about this a lot that I got one buddy, I can tell you, he, he's just got this mountain. He feels like this mountain of pressure on his shoulders because like, he just worried what other people think, uh, what other people see of him. You know, where it's like, dude, you know what people care about? The, when, when you post a picture, all they care about of, is that smile on your face. That's what they care about. Dude, I don't like when it comes to antler size, like you give me the guy that posts a picture and he just sm just cheesing. You can tell, man. He's he's hunted his ass off all yep. year. He did his homework all year long. Whatever the case may be, and he's cheesing, dude. Yeah, I'm I'll smash that like button all day long. Yeah, you know. Well, and I think too, the more and more people can just because I know there's a lot of people listening to this right now. They're like in their vehicle or something by themselves. It's like, man, I feel the same way he does. Like, mm -hmm. but you don't want to say it. Like it's okay to say it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you and I talk, like, we we joke mostly about, like, when we went to Kansas, like, what are you going to kill? What are you going to, mm -hmm. like, what are you, are you going to say no to a 120? You yeah. Say, you know, we joke a lot of, because it's conversation piece and it yep. passes a 14-hour drive. But, like, at the end of the day, like, that last deer that I was going to shoot was probably, like, a five-point. Mm -hmm. You know, just yep. a big five-point. And honestly, I would have got so shit bag wasted that night because it was so much fun. <laughs> now I will say like the biggest thing, my biggest, my, one of my biggest pet peeves is like, you know, you hear on a show or a podcast or like, you know, you hear, you see a real inst like social media reel or something. It's like, ah, it's not the biggest one, but no, fuck that. Like, mm. I don't care if it wasn't. The, yeah. Guess what? Every deer that gets shot, there's a deer bigger somewhere in this world. Yep. Yeah. So he's not going to be the biggest one. I get it. Yeah. Like who gives a shit? Own it. Yeah. If you really think that, then why'd you pull the trigger? That that's at the very top tier for pet peeve for me when it comes yeah. to hunting. That I, I hate when guys say that, you know, like I just want you to be happy, you know, cause yeah. guess what? Everyone that's sees your picture or video, like they don't know what you may have going on in your life. Mm -hmm. They don't know if that's even the biggest deer in your area. You're just, you have this instant you know, you're instantly saying, oh man, he's not, he, he's not the biggest one where it's like, dude, no, no one knows that. Yeah. They just see, they just want to see you smile, you know? And, and I, I think that it, that's a lot like when, if the, if you're saying that it's, that's, that is someone that's worried about what other people think. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Where it's like, dude, you, you got to just insecure. Hunt. Yeah. You got to hunt your own hunt. And here's, here's what guys I'm, I'm in, this is just me learning from personal experience. The minute you decide two things. One, that you're going to hunt how you want to hunt. But the, also, when you learn to hunt your style, when you come up with your own process how to do things, I'm t I, in my opinion, you will become more successful that way. Because if you yeah. are trying to hunt like someone else, 
it's not going to work because that someone else's situation is a thousand times different than your situation. That's just reality. I, I fell down that same trap 10, 12 years ago. When I first started getting into big block hunting or, or at least interested in it, I shot my first big one and I was hooked on it and I was doing all the research. I was, you know, back then 10, 12 years ago, it was hunting forums. It was, that's where you were learning a lot of your stuff. And I seen the guys being successful on it and I knew like, okay, that's, I got to do what they're doing. And I quickly realized that it took me probably two or three seasons there and that it's like, no, I can't do exactly what they're doing. Exactly. Because their situation is different than mine. Their bucks are different than mine. They're, we're not hunting the same bucks. We're not hunting the same. Your neighbors are different. Yeah. Uh, like it's, it's totally different. But what I could do is I could, you know, apply some of their, you know, tidbits of tactics here and there, but apply those to my situation and come up with David's own process. I don't want, listen, I don't want the next guy's process to be the same as mine because it's not going to work where you are. It works for me because of where I am and how I've adjusted to him. You know, we, you know, we, we got a good buddy, Troy Pottinger. Okay. Talk, you know, the guy arguably knows more about scrapes than anyone else in the United yep. States. He, he truly does. Troy and I were talking, we, we started talking back in 2011. We started talking and I, I, I loved what his concept was, but I, it, I quickly realized I was like, I don't, I don't have mountains. Hell, I don't even have that kind of tree species, mm -hmm. but there were some, you know, there was some talk in there about, you know, outside of the security cover where they feel safe by the bedding between food and bedding near, you know, on the edges, his edge looks different than mine, but I still have an edge. The edge of what I hunt inside of the, you know, the swamp may look different than the inside of your edge, but guess what? You still have an edge, so we can apply those. We can adjust them. You have to adjust yeah. those kind of things. But I, I kind of, it's a little bit different of the, 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 you know, concept, but fell down the same trap of I wanted to, you know, hunt just like someone else hunted, but I, I just, the results weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and. I think it stems a little bit from like keyboard warriors as well. Like mm -hmm. those are just jealous people. Like if you, if you have some piece of content of you're listening to mine or, or, or see something that has to do with me and you think for a second that you just want to like, tell me how much, how you badly you feel about it. Like, you know, 2021 when I shot that Ohio deer full frontal, like I still get, YouTube messages like that's the worst shot I've ever seen anybody take like you know what I don't care what you think mm -hmm. I legitimately don't so just save your three minutes of typing it out or writing me I don't care because you know what the next deer that does it I'm gonna do it again mm -hmm. well, and I'm gonna do it again yeah what's what's funny about those situations is I most of I'd probably say over 99 percent of those people like 99 point five percent of those people haven't been in this situation no you don't know what you would do in the situation you know like you ever you ever I, I, this is a little bit sidetracked but like you watch a movie or something and your kid would be like oh my gosh i don't know what i there's no way i could do that well you don't know that yet because you haven't right. been in like you know you, a, a fight or flight kind of situation where it's like dude you don't know that yet you you weren't you in don't. that situation yet, you, don't. you know and, and uh i mean you can say what you want but for all those keyboard warriors, I mean, you put a 170 inch typical 10 in front of your face at what was the distance? Uh, um, oh boy, 11 yards. 11. I think oh, it was 11 yards. Well, within inside top pin club. Yeah. You 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 sit in the situation, to decide what you want to do. <laughs> well, and my whole thing is like, you know, it just goes back to gear and confidence, and like as long as you have, like. I can't tell you that I would have not shot that if I didn't shoot my bow three more times than I did that like mm -hmm. that year. I, you got a 170 inch deer day one, you did all the scouting, hang and hunt at 11 yards. There's not a lot of, I would guess if I asked a hundred people, less than five of them would say they wouldn't take that shot. Well, if and, they were real with themselves. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, and you didn't even hit on this yet. And maybe you haven't even thought about it, but when I watched the video the first time, when as I as I'm watching it, because it, it was pretty, it was pretty over the shoulder kind of yep. video. I'm watching that deer's body language, and he, like you guys, are, the sticks. You guys are done, done, done. Picked. But also when when he realizes what's going on, 
he fully opens himself up. Uh, yep. He's he's not like walking down a hill or you know what I mean. Where like the situation, like it, it was the perfect situation right then. Yeah. And in whether you knew it at the time or not, but it's like I, when I look at the video, I'm reading that deer's body language, yeah. and it's like yeah, it's it's now or never kind yeah. of thing. But it's not like a freak out now or never. Like you were already at full draw. You know what I mean? Like it was just, it was just whether he turned left or he turned right, or he just opened himself up. His head was fully up because he was locked in on you guys up in that tree. Yeah. Yeah, So that's, I guess, one of the big things that, you know, it's not like a day-to-day battle with myself, but there are times when it comes up, it's like, man, eh, what are people going to think of that? Like, as long as I'm true to myself and legal with everything I'm doing, which you know me, I am like by the book, Mm -hmm. almost, almost to like, like a sickening feel. Yeah. Like I, I do not want to screw up. I I've done it before. Like not knowing I did it, I did it. Cause mm-hmm. I didn't know the rules sure. in Missouri. Yeah. Like, and I've talked about that in the podcast before. Um, but like I'm, it's not that I'm going to be any different on the podcast or in general, but like you're going to hear me be probably a little more transparent. Cause I'm just like at my wits end with it. Like, like I'm exhausted almost like mm-hmm. I'm done doing not that I was doing everything for someone else, but like, I don't feel like I was giving everybody my full, like me, like this is a B, you know what I mean? I say, fuck. Yeah. I swear. I, you're human. I'm human. I, you know, I'm no different than everybody else out there. I want people to come up and want to drink a beer with me. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? And I just want to have fun doing it. And you know what? If like, I got hung up on no go. I thought he was two and a half years old and I wasn't going to shoot him. Like what was I fucking thinking? Mm -hmm. The deer was the biggest deer I had to hunt last year, regardless of the size, but he was the biggest deer I had to hunt. Yeah. Like, you know, you got guys like I've had other guys on the podcast from Michigan that, you know, Zach, he kills, he passed up two bucks this year within bow range on camera that were bigger than the deer I shot because you know what? His situation is a little different than mine. Exactly. You know, exactly that, that, that you just nailed it, dude. Yeah. You just nailed it. And, and not that Zach would do this. So I'm going to Zach, if you're listening to this, I, I'm not like calling you out here, but if like a person like Zach was to like throw shade on me for that, then that's his problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? For shooting the deer I did like, just hunt your own hunt, man. That's oh, that's what I'm going to say. Just, just you do you. Yeah. I love that you pick that, though, to work on. You know what I mean? Because it's the mm-hmm. complete, someone could say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to try to run more trail cameras this fall or something like that. You know, or I love where you pick that. But well, here, we talked about the process. I've mm-hmm. got my process down. Yeah. Like, I know what I have to yep. do. Yep. And, and that's the thing is, like, we talked about with the last decade of, of kind of being in that TV world that molded you into what you are today, where it's like, but what's exciting for me, Aaron, is and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but like I think like you're still like like you're just getting that process rolling. Now. Oh yeah, like you know what I mean. Think like so. it's, it's, I feel it. Yeah, where it's like it's it's just starting to take steam. Yeah, where it's like it's these next you know these next ten years are going to be fun to watch. You know, because you know we talked about earlier. It's like you know kind of getting back to your roots. You know, learning how to hunt Aaron's way. Mm-hmm. And when you, and now that you're getting that figured out and now it's like, okay, we're going to, we're going to rinse and repeat. We're going to keep building. We're going to keep working on it. And I mean, think about this, like literally the thing you want to work on is your mental part of it. Like yeah. that's, you know what I mean? Where that's going to pay dividends, but you know what the awesome part is what you want to work on. You can fix yourself. A hundred percent. That's the nice thing. You don't have to rely on anything or anyone to help that. You yep. get to do it yourself. Agreed. Yeah. So I mean, that's like the biggest thing I got going. I guess like I, I'm so dialed with all my gear. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm dialed there. I'm dialed with my system. There's some couple tweaks I want to make. There's a couple things I, I feel like there's some uh, opportunities I left out there this year. I didn't utilize all my SD card cameras like mm-hmm. I thought I should have. Um, and you know, this year, you know how it is. If I do draw Iowa, like literally everything I feel like gets put on the back burner. Yeah. So like I got to figure out how to navigate that because Mm -hmm. I don't want to lose. Like when I went to Iowa 19, arguably had the biggest deer I've ever had to hunt in Michigan. And we were talking about in the one fifties, Yep. like 
uh, like he showed up like all summer and I had him on camera. I'm like, God, I want to hunt this deer so bad, but I had Iowa, you know? So I gave up like that. Yep. And I'm like, I, I want to keep the finger on the pulse of Michigan and all the farms. And like, I'd like to still get another piece of property, if not two pieces of property, just to kind of spread my footprint a little bit and, um, continue to build. Yeah. And just yeah. continue to build. That's, that's it. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I like it, dude. I like so, it. I, I don't blame you though with the Iowa thing. It's, it, it's tough. I, Iowa has that feel that, you know, for us non-residents that when you do draw and you are as passionate as we are about bow hunting, um, you, you kind of, you, you slide all the chips to the middle mm-hmm. kind of feeling, you know, yep. and especially like you, you said, you know, like last time you went, you had a, a real big deer here in Michigan show up, but man, when you got a family, you gotta, you gotta show them like, to me at least, like when I draw that next Iowa tag, they know how important that is. There's going to be some stuff around me in Michigan that will take a back seat. That's just the nature of the beast basically. You yeah. know what I mean? Where it's just, you know, cause I know I'll get back to the Michigan thing, but like next time I'm kind of like you, next time I draw Iowa, I'm pushing all in. Like, I don't even want to do just a, Oh, I'm going to go out there for a week long. No, like, Hey family, like I would love to do, Hey, th- the weather looks great. It's October 22nd through 26th. I'd like to go hit that for four days. You know, always have maybe that week planned Yep. in the magical month of November. But, you know, if, we, if the weather looks great on uh, October 1, hey, maybe go try it yep. kind of thing. That, that's how I want to handle it yeah. next time I draw Iowa. So I'm with you, man. It's I, I hope you draw, dude. It, <sighs> dude I hope you. you draw. But here's here's not only if you don't draw two things, I'm going to be bummed for you. But I'm also going to it's going to hurt even it's going to hurt some more for me because I'm going to it's going to be reality of like okay, you're not going next year. You're two years out. Yeah, so we're like mm-hmm. that That one kind of sucked too. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we're, I'm not going to know until June whether mm-hmm. I draw, but like I'm not going to let that time pass. Like I'm going to call Chad. I want to go out there this spring. Yep. There's no snow out there. I'd like to go out there, maybe do a shed hunt or may, like just walk a farm or two, see what he's got planned, what he's okay with, um, and try to like, start getting to know the farm, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't want to just be like, show up in the fall. Hey, I'm going to hunt. Let's, yeah. let's get after it. Like, no, I'm, I'm not about that. Yeah. Like get some Iowa dirt on the boots. Exactly. Man. So, yeah. and go out there and hang out with Matthew and, yeah. and Chad, God, such a good time with those guys. And so that, that's the plan. But I got one question before we do commence here. Yep. If you know, we're in February right now. And to me, it's the worst month for white deals. Like I personally just, okay. I still think there's things, especially right now, usually we have snow. We don't. Yep. Like right now, it's good because you can do a lot of walking and do a lot of scouting. Um, so it's like situational base. But in general, there's usually snow here and it kind of sucks. Um, what is the most important thing people could be doing right now? And it could be anything. It could be scouting. It could be gear prep. It could be shooting your bow. Like In David's mind, what is the most important thing? people could be doing right now um you know super bowl is over march madness hasn't kicked yet if you're a sports fan really not a lot of tv shows on unless you're a jersey shore fan which i am a jersey shore fan uh, <laughs> are you i'm a closet shore fan okay yeah, yeah. all right cabs yeah <laughs> <laughs> the shirt before the shirt right you know <laughs> dude i've never watched it before what never watched okay it. <laughs> geez let's not even get into that anyway all right, i guess um, you are young though aren't you <laughs> yeah i am what is the most important thing you could be doing right now yeah so you know you no start, right or wrong answer yeah. just in david's i'm david's gonna opinion. i'm gonna hit it with uh two things um but before i get into those two things i was gonna argue pretty hard on your comment about it being the the worst month for whitetails because of the no snow uh for years, a lot of times we have snow. So mm-hmm. you nailed it. Like, cause a lot of times I think people could argue what's, what's the, one of the best months for scouting. And I think a lot of people are would answer March for one simple concept. We're losing our snow. Yep. That's usually around the time. But for anyone, if, if it's February right now and you don't have any snow and if you're a guy like me, like I'm not super worried about finding sheds. You know, if there was a buck that I really wanted to find sheds on, I may I may let him sit and go do something else. But the two things I'd be doing, one, in your home state, get out and walk. 
Okay. Get out and walk ground. Learn ground that you feel like you don't you don't know enough yet. Even ground that you've, you know, hunted for years. Maybe go out and walk that too. Cause there could be there could be something brand new out there, a brand new blowdown that's shifting deer differently, you know. It, you know, that the swamps grow every year. They seem to expand a little bit more every yep. year. So those edges are changing. So in your home state, do this. Get out and just do some walking. Learn, learn the the way of the land. You know, but not, don't don't worry about necessarily putting on a ton of miles. Put good quality miles on the type of walks that when you're done, you get home for the, that evening, and you maybe crack a beer after a dinner, and you think about your day of scouting. Be focused, you know, on a spot that you're like, I cannot wait to get back in there and tear that apart more. Spend time doing that, not just trying to see how many miles the tracker shows. That that's what I would be doing, and also. I love this time of year. You talked about it earlier. Build on what you already have. Mm -hmm. If you have six properties, dude, that's freaking awesome. Why not go get a seventh? Work on that right now because I'm telling you right now, what I've learned from knocking on doors, they don't they don't love when you come asking two weeks before deer season. When you're asking them now, hey, can my daughter and I or my son and I or my dog and I, can we come out and you know, I'd like to look for some shed antlers or just walk your ground and get out and get some fresh air. I'd love to have my kids get outside off of the media devices and get some fresh air and just go walk some ground. Do that. Go learn mm -hmm. some new ground, even if it's public. You know, walking a piece of public right now, maybe you're not even going to hunt that public, but maybe just, you know, letting your eyes work to find something new that may... You know, you may be able to use on a piece of private land, something like that. My advice right now for your in-state stuff, just get out, get outside. You got get outside and just just learn as much as you can right yep. now. Um, for for the guys out of state stuff, because this this is something that kind of you and I are in the middle of in right now. Don't wait to the last minute. Th this works best in my family. I don't want to wait to the last minute to spring uh, out of state hunting trip on my family. I don't want to tell them in August and September, hey, I want to leave in October. I want to do that now. So I'm doing that homework now. And that doesn't mean that I have to go get in a truck and go to Missouri and scout public land every weekend. But what I can do on my free time, I can get on my phone. I can get on that computer and bring up mapping apps. And I can bring up a couple of them, Onyx, Barton Forge, Google Earth Pro, whatever you want, and start looking at different pieces of land on different maps and trying to tear that apart. Plan ahead. You know, maybe, you know, I thought that I thought about the last time I went to Iowa. I was booking my my uh my cabins in Iowa for that hunting fall in the springtime. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get all that stuff taken care of, you know. So that's that's what I would be doing. That, yep. I mean it's it's always it's always a little bit of something. If I do one thing every week that's one percent better that'd be 52 percent better at the end of the year that's yeah. only one thing a week you know what i mean or naturally we do a little bit more than that per week but yeah that's what that's what i would say what what would you tell someone nothing groundbreaking other than like you know tree stand maintenance There's like safety maintenance kind of thing like right now i i see like a lot of fields around here are uh you know if you hunt open areas and you can't really like it's a long walk back there and you know you got to get if you have a ranger or something like that you can get through waterways you can get through like get back there now and and pull that stuff out and get it out and get it back to the garage or get, and check bolts check you know if you're a tree stand person or you know whatever that might be get your ground blind out of the woods or you know stuff like that yeah it's just that time you know get the dog out and you know, I, I agree with you, like get out there and, and walk and stuff like that, which you're doing a lot of, I've, I've done, I've been out once. Um, but you know, that's kind of where I'm at. With yeah. It. I, I'll add on one more thing about when you're out there walking, this is the, in to some people, this may sound crazy, but when I talked about a decade ago, learning how other guys hunt, I seen a lot of guys would take pictures of tracks. And the one thing I, I, I noticed that when the snow melted at this time of year, the tracks stood out better than any other time. Mm -hmm. And I would take, I would take like a, a, you know, they're almost like a, like a seamstress type tape measure. Like it's a soft one that you can just yep. roll up and you could take one of those out with you and just start measuring different tracks. And eventually you're going to learn, you know, size wise, in not only size wise, but visually how much different tracks look. Are you measuring like 
side to side or yeah, length of whatever track. you can just look at it you know because that you start measuring them and just really paying attention because you got to think when that snow melts and right now we don't have snow but if we went anywhere of your hunting properties right now aaron the trails are so muddy oh yeah they don't even have you know because those trails been beat down all fall you know they the leaves are already falling on them and now they're being walked on on top of it where they're just literally mud highways mm-hmm. And the mud can exaggerate a little bit of that track, depends on how muddy it is. And you can tell by if the mud's like pushed out on the edges yeah. or something. But that's a really great way of, of learning size of tracks. You know, you you don't even have to take a tape measure out there. Just put your fingers by them, but take pictures of them too. Take a bunch of pictures during the day of, of a day of scouting of the tracks. And then when you sit down and got some time and just roll through the tracks and be like, wow, this one, look at this one. This one's way different than the other one. This was a big deer. Then you start studying, okay, is that a, is that our buck or doe track? Then mm-hmm. is it running or is it walking? And then all of a sudden, when you start paying attention to tracks, and the reason I brought brought this up is I've been walking in peace that it's so flooded right now. I can't see scrapes on the ground. I may be able to see the, the licking branches and stuff, but right on the edge of those flooded zones, because they're still walking through those flooded areas, when they leave them, the trails are muddy and so are their hoofs and those first tracks outside those those like flooded out areas there's a lot of information to be had right there I like it's that. like i can't i can't tell what size of rack he has on his head right now but i can tell you like okay this this is probably at least a three-year-old buck here in michigan maybe even older you know mm-hmm. i can't tell the difference between the ages of like that three to five to four to six whatever the case may be but you can tell if it's a if it's a mature animal at least yep. i yeah. like that Cool. Let's commence on that, man. Let's do it, buddy. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all the downloads and all the all the support. Go to iTunes. Leave a five star rating. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on your computer or your iPad. Doesn't matter. Go to Spotify. You can't do a written review, but do a five star rating there as well, please. So thank you guys very much, and we'll be here next time on the Fall Podcast.